guys, I'm Jessica. I wanted to come on today and say hello and thank you because this is actually my 100th video for my YouTube channel that I started just over two years ago. And today I am going to be making a double page scrapbooking layout around a camping theme. Um, it's part of a YouTube hop that I'm participating in. But I just really couldn't let that 100 video milestone pass by without coming on to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really have appreciated everyone's kind words and the comments um, and the likes and the views and the subscribers and everything. It has been so much fun over the last two years and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the next um, 100 videos videos bring. So let's go ahead and get started on today's project. Again, thank you. Okay, so today's video is for that YouTube hop about campfires and kayaks. It doesn't have to be specific to those two things, but I knew I wanted to use the stamp set called S'more Adventures. It's a camping themed stamp set. And these papers from the Crisp Air collection from Close to My Heart. We actually just got back from a week long camping trip last week and I knew exactly what photos I wanted to use. And it was my birthday last week and my husband got me a, an at home photo printer. So I had thought I would be able to print those photos for this layout today but he didn't realize that he had to order the photo paper separately. So um, here you can see, I'll show you just two of the photos I'm gonna use later once I do finally get that in the mail from Amazon. Um, normally Amazon delivers in like five minutes, but it's taking them like two weeks, so oh, go figure. But anyway, those are some of the photos we're gonna be using on our camping layout today. All right, so in this pattern from my Make It From Your Heart Volume 3 book, um, there is the, the page that I, paper that I want to use as my base page actually doesn't show, um, you can't see all of it on the 12 by 12 page. And I wanted to use this really pretty pattern paper as the base for both my right and left side. Um, but I didn't want to waste both pieces of paper in my pack. So I did a little bit of math and what I decided to do was to cut it um, because it certainly is enough out of one sheet uh, to be able to make it look as though it is the base page for both sides of this double page layout. I hope that makes sense. So here you can see what I'm gonna do is use the one piece in the top and one in the bottom. And then by the time I put the other pieces from this pattern um, on the page as well, it ends up covering all 12, 12 inches. So I can just really mount this to a piece of cardstock on the bottom and then no one is ever the wiser that I didn't use two full pieces of that pattern paper as my base. I hope that makes sense. So just something to think about. I like to be very thrifty with my paper and I'm sure other people feel the same way. It's so hard sometimes to cut into that pretty pattern paper, isn't it? Um, and it's not wasting it, but sometimes it kind of feels like it is when so much of it is covered up. So that was my solution. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere these pieces down according to that pattern. And then, like I said, I'm using my photo placeholders because I wasn't able to print the photos like I thought I was going to. Um, and I'm also excited because this particular pattern calls for a bunch of two by two photos. And I am excited to be able to add my photos um, to like a collage and print them in smaller sizes once I do finally get that paper. So that was one of the other reasons I picked this particular pattern. I thought it would be fun to do that with some smaller sized photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and off camera adhere all the pieces down to both pages. I did make a note to myself to cut down my four by six photos just by a quarter inch so that I could see that um, green mat on there. And then my journaling will go over on that other green space. And now I am ready to work on my embellishments. So my plan is, is to use basically just the stamp set and the coordinating die cuts to create almost all of my embellishments for this layout. Now, I will link a video um, at the end of this. I did use this stamp set to make some Christmas cards not long ago. Um, and you can see that the last time I used it, I just cut a few extra pieces out. I do like to do that when I am using my stamps and thin cuts. Um, if I'm gonna run it through once, I might as well get a couple of pieces of paper. And then here, this is a fun um, part of that set that actually doesn't have a, a stamp that goes with it, but it does have a die cut to cut out some snowy mountains. So here you can see I have just uh, run a whole bunch of these through 
And one cool trick is that you can double up your papers and that way you only have to make one pass but you get twice as many cuts out. So you can see here I've got two pieces of cardstock and then I just use a little bit of washi tape to hold everything in place. And then, like I said, it's a fast way to cut out a whole bunch. I'm not gonna need all of these for my layout, but if I go ahead and make them now, then I have them ready to go the next time I want to create with the set. All right, some of these I haven't used before, so I'm gonna make sure that I season my stamp. So I just grab that clear stamp, put it on my acrylic block, and then I rub it against my hand to remove some of the production oils that are still on there, and that's gonna help me get a good crisp image. And then I am stamping it with intense black ink since I plan to color these in with my tri-blend markers later. And that is the ink to use if you're gonna do any sort of coloring. And then the cool thing about the stamps um, that are clear and the clear acrylic block is you can see exactly where you need to place it in order to do that. All right, I've colored everything and I left the chair so I could do that with you. Um, I am using my tri-blend markers. You can see here is the lantern I already colored. I did add some liquid glass to that as well as my marshmallows in this marshmallow bag. So that was just a fun little touch. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna color that chair with you. I did decide to recut my bear and color him again out of white cardstock instead of that toffee colored cardstock because I thought that if he had a white marshmallow stick but he was brown otherwise it might look a little weird so that's why I did him twice. But with my tribal markers it just has um, three shades of the same color in one marker so what I like to do is go around the edges and add some of the darkest shade and then I come in and add some of that mid shade and then I go over the whole thing with the lightest shade and it is very easy and fast to get something that looks like this. Isn't that fun shading in there? Super simple to do. Okay, so now all of those pieces are prepared. I know that I want to put my trees up top here and tuck them behind that photo. Um, I knew that one right away. And then the other ones, I just kind of have an idea in my head of kind of putting them around the page on these two inch green squares. So those photos that I showed you earlier, and I do have more of them, um, they're all about when we were making s'mores last week while we were camping. Um, the kids have done this a couple of times this summer. Their thing is they like to create a store um, for the s'mores. And so before we can have our s'mores, we have to go up to their little makeshift table and you know they spent days making a little menu and coloring it. And we have to order what we want for our s'mores. You know, how many marshmallows do you want? How toasted are they? Um, how many pieces of chocolate? And then the kids write down the order and then they make it and then they deliver the s'more to us while we're sitting around the campfire. It's actually a pretty sweet deal because they do all the work and we just get to enjoy the s'mores. So they've been on that kick and that's kind of what this layout is about. Um, and so I definitely want to use that little bear and as he's toasting his marshmallow, I think he's so cute. And then I kind of fussed around with the chair and the lantern a little bit because um, the chair looked a little lonely, I thought, in that top square. Um, but the lantern was like almost the same size or bigger and I thought that that seemed weird. So I ended up pairing the chair with the little bag of marshmallows instead. And for all of these little die cut embellishments, I am putting a foam tape on some of them and then the rest of them I'm gluing down flat to the page. So I'm just kind of mixing um, my dimensions here and I'm gonna pop up the marshmallows and the bear and the stick are popped up on foam tape as well. And then same thing over here on my right hand side of this layout, I wanna put the tent down flat and then I'm gonna pop up a few things around it. So um, this is a cute little tent here. We weren't even actually tent camping, but it was too cute not to use. Um, and then I'm gonna put the lantern in front of it on some foam tape and stick that in front, kind of like a little seam. And then later I will cut some strips of white cardstock and put them above the tent right here you can see and that's going to be where my journaling goes. So super fun. And then because this is a camping outdoorsy kind of layout, I am of course going to turn to where my very favorite embellishment, which is my, my wooden buttons. Um, so I spend a little bit of time kind of playing around with which buttons do I want to use? What size? Um, some of these buttons have like a solid outline. Some of them have a dashed outline. Some of them are plain. Some of them are hearts. So I won't make you watch all of it, but I do kind of fuss just a little bit with what I'm going to put where. And then I'm keeping in mind that this is a double page layout. So if I do it on the left hand page, I need to put it on the right hand page. 
and I want to make sure that where I put these wooden buttons that they end up forming that visual triangle. So I'm just, that's what I'm doing here. I'm kind of holding out that left hand page so I can kind of get a better visual of where I want to put those buttons over here on this page. And I end up putting a heart one and then a smaller circle up on top of that four by six photo. And then there, I'm happy with that. So what I do whenever I adhere these to my pages, I usually put a little bit of this liquid glue down first and then um, just to kind of hold it in place. And then I have a personal thing about buttons having a thread through them. I think that they need to be sewn on. And so I am going to stitch all of these buttons onto the page. I do that by putting that little foam pad underneath. I grab my piercing tool and then I just poke myself some sewing holes here and use some embroidery thread and a needle to very quickly just put a little bit of thread through each of those holes. So there, that's done. It's just an extra like two or three minutes, but I think it makes all the difference. Um, and you can see that here. Okay, I'm really almost done. Um, I just need to figure out what my title is going to be. The cool thing about this stamp set is there are a lot of words and phrases on here that you can combine in different ways to say a whole lot of different things. Um, but what I decide to do because I'm focusing on the whole s'more store <laughs> story, is I am going to stamp out Let's Make S'more Memories. And I'm going to do it on this New England Ivy cardstock and heat emboss it with some white heat, emboss or heat powder, embossing powder, sorry. Um, and so to get started, I am using my um, anti-static pouch, which I like to rub over the paper first. I find that this is an important step because it just makes sure that you don't get that embossing powder stuck to any other part of your paper and it gives you a crisper image of whatever it is that you are stamping and embossing. So um, I have definitely forgotten that step before in the past and then I end up having to redo it because it really does make such a big difference. So one of the things that I like about this particular um, title that I'm gonna do is that the words let's make and memories are the same size and same font. And then on the stamp set, the word s'more is bigger in a different font. So I like how when I line it all up that the s'more definitely kind of stands out and pops a little bit. And so that was just, I thought, a fun way to create my own title. Like I said, lots of different options on the stamp set. Um, that you could say a whole bunch of different things by pairing and combining them in different ways. So try to make this not as messy, but I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but when I heat emboss, I definitely make a mess every time, no matter how careful I try to be. And there, that is all set. Okay, so I'm going to cut this into a banner and then dovetail the ends. And then that will be almost the last thing. I really, my goal for this was to keep this layout fairly clean and simple and just really make the stamp set the focus um, for embellishments and just like I said, kind of keep it clean and simple, nothing too crazy, no splatters here. Um, and so I hope that you guys have enjoyed. So we'll go ahead and get those dovetails cut into that banner. And then the big decision will be where to put it. <laughs> All right, so I have on my other papers, um, I didn't show this part earlier, but I did edge distress them with ink and this is how I did it. I just used a foam blending tool and a coordinating ink color to go around all of my papers. And I like to do that because I think it gives it a finishing touch. And also close to my heart's cardstock has that white core. So sometimes I don't want it to show. Sometimes I like it to show, but sometimes I don't want it to. And so this is a good way to cover that up. So there, that's done. And like I said, now I just have to figure out where to put this title. <laughs> I have so many options here. Let me pull my pages back in um, and we'll kind of figure this out here. Um, Left side, right side, I don't know, down here. I kind of like it up there by those buttons, but then it's a little bit long, and then it's over on the right side, and I always feel like maybe the title should be on the left-hand side. So I decide to go with the left-hand side and just put it up here. I like how that green kind of pops out against that white pattern paper. And I'm just gonna eyeball there and put that down. Okay, all right, one last tiny little thing to do. Um, this is a trick that I learned, I want to say, from watching Katie Taylor, and that is to use a white gel tent pen to cover up any of your coloring mistakes. And I did accidentally go out of the lines with my blue marker, and I just covered it with my white gel pen, and you can't even tell. So that's an awesome little trick. And then I'm adding just a few little white details to the bottom of my fire. 
which you can see here real quick and uh, close up coming up in a second here. And that's it. And like I said, just keeping it clean and simple and fast. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Um, again, thank you so much for all of your support for um, coming by my little channel. I really appreciate everything. Um, this is part of a YouTube hop, so I will leave links to the other crafters who are playing along with that campfires and kayaks theme down below. So make sure to check out their creations as well. Again, thank you for watching and happy crafting. Bye guys.